This is DW News Africa. Coming up on the program, remorse from Germany for its colonial era atrocities. But is that enough to atone for the damage done? A gesture from Germany's president during a visit to Tanzania asking for forgiveness for his country's brutal actions in its former colony. Also coming up, three generations on and the pain is still felt in Tanzania among the families of those the Germans killed. They tell us their stories. And a project bridging past and present in a push for both justice and public awareness on Germany's bloody colonial past. I'm Tommy Oladipo. Welcome to the program. This week, Germany's president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, visited Tanzania on a trip that has highlighted calls for accountability for his country's brutal past in Africa. German colonial rule in what's now Tanzania lasted for just over 30 years, up until the end of the First World War. The Berlin Conference of 1885 was a major point in the carving up of the African continent by European powers. Germany went on to declare colonies in West Africa, as well as in German East Africa, which covered the mainland areas of what's now Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, and a small part of Mozambique. The Germans brutally suppressed resistance by their African subjects. Now, Germany's president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, visited the town of Songea in southern Tanzania, which is named after Songea Mbano, one of the leaders killed by German colonialists for leading resistance. The town was a major flashpoint in the Maji Maji uprising in the early 1900s. The German president stood for several minutes at the graves of the 66 Maji Maji fighters and their leader and national hero, Songea Mbano. They were all hanged here by the German colonial rulers. It's a historic moment and the recognition of guilt for one of the greatest crimes in Germany's colonial history. Up to 300,000 people died in the Maji Maji War. I bow before the victims of German colonial rule and as Germany's federal president, I want to ask for forgiveness for what Germans did to your forefathers. What is more, I want to assure you that we Germans will, together with you, look for answers to the unresolved questions that haunt you. It is the first time a German head of state has recognized the colonial crimes in such clear terms. In what was then called German East Africa, the Africans rose up against exploitation and brutal tyranny. What followed was one of the bloodiest colonial wars. Many people died of hunger because the German colonial troops burned their fields to deprive the people of their livelihood. Crimes that are recorded in Songea's small museum. Each new generation can learn what happened here. Behind closed doors, President Steinmeier met descendants of national hero Songea. I am aware of the great burden his fate still places on your people today and what anguish it causes his family. I sense how deeply the pain of his death and of how he was murdered is felt to this day. And I understand that this cruel deed has left its mark on many generations and continues to echo in your families. In ihren Familien fortwirkt. The Germans brought hundreds of skulls to Europe for so-called research, a racist endeavor. Today they are stored in German museums. Getting them back is particularly important to the descendants. President Steinmeier promised to do all he can to ensure that Songea's skull is found and returned. Actually, it is our remains and it is our custom to bury everything 
and there we end our morning days. We will not end crying if we don't we don't bury our our, our ancestors. That is our mission. The president's apology is a big moment for the relatives. They seem moved and relieved. Actually, it is a healing to our community, to the family of Mbano and the whole community of Songea. So we do welcome again for any apologization. Steinmeier's visit is also aimed at raising awareness in Germany, where the crimes in the former German East Africa are largely forgotten today. My message to you is that Germany stands ready to address the past together. No one is to forget what happened back then. And my great hope is that especially young people will get involved in addressing the past together. School children, students, scientists, museum staff. After Steinmeier's visit and his words of reconciliation, Tanzania and Germany may now find it easier to come to terms with their shared past together and at the same time strengthen cooperation for a better future. Katja Coyle is Minister of State at Germany's Foreign Office and she travelled with the German president. DW's Katharina Kroll asked her whether Steinmeier's pledges were enough. He promised that we'll do everything to try to find the human remains. He did not promise that we can do it because it is difficult. We already tried some. We, ha we haven't tried everything. So we are continuing this work with all our institutions and museums. And without being able to promise a success, we'll promise to do everything that's possible to finally bring back the ancestors to Tanzania where they belong. Uh, yeah, many Germans don't know anything about this uh, part of German history. Uh, how can that be improved? Well, this this visit and this this question, this ask, the president asking for forgiveness, will also be part in telling in Germany what has happened here. So this is our responsibility to make this more known, also in history classes in schools. So that is very important to the Tanzanians, to the families, and it's our duty. And will Germany uh, now address the question of reparation like we did with the Herero and Nama in uh, Namibia? Well, what we do is we listen to the Tanzanian people, we listen to the families, to the descendants. What are their needs? What do they want? And they didn't mention this to, uh, in our talks with them. So they have some needs and we'll work on that, what they think is necessary to heal these wounds. But so far we didn't, they didn't talk about reparations. Minister Coyle, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Germany also committed colonial era crimes before and after the Maji Maji War. In the north, Mangi Meli, king of the Chaga people, led a resistance against the Germans, who then publicly hanged him. His is one of several skulls believed to be in Germany today. Charles Combe reports from Moshi in northern Tanzania, where the grandchildren of Mangi Meli and other leaders are still on a quest for justice. The town of Moshi on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro is home to the Chaga tribe. Isaria Meli's grandfather was Mangimeli, leader of the Chaga, when they fought German colonists but lost. Several years later, the Germans hanged Meli and others, thinking they were going to rebel again. They took several skulls back to Germany. What was done to Mangimeli, to me and my family, we are not satisfied. They planted fear into our lives. This act wasn't normal. It was an act of great violence that was done to us. And that is why we have not lived in peace all these years. This museum tells Mangimeli's story, his leadership of the Chaga tribe, and his rebellion against the Germans. The fact that the Germans not only executed him, 
but beheaded him and took his skull to Berlin means a normal grave will not be an option, even if the skull is returned. We have decided that after its return, his skull will not be buried in the ground because his body was not legally buried. His body was laid to rest without proper rights, and where he was laid, he cannot be seen. Therefore, we believe his spirit is not at peace, and we are looking at a place where he will be commemorated. Mangimeli used to own all this land here, as he was chief of the Chaga tribe. It is now owned by his grandson and his generations. That tree there was where the German colonizers hung him and 18 others. Zabron Kiwelu's grandfather was among those killed here. His skull is also in Germany. A DNA test has confirmed the relationship. Kiwelu wants more than just the skull. He also wants compensation. We request that the Tanzanian government take a firm stance to ensure that the German government pays us. If the government maintains this stance, we could be paid even today. Isaria went to Germany to take a DNA test, but says officials there could not find a skull with a link. His 50-year-old fight to find his grandfather's remains and bring them home continues. So, following the German president's visit to Tanzania and his plea for forgiveness for what Germans did to Songhe Mbano in the Maji Maji War, we asked people in Dar es Salaam what they thought about this gesture. It's good that he considered it, because he's just one of many presidents who've been in power since that time. It's commendable that he recognized the importance of this visit and of seeking forgiveness for what happened in the past. This will strengthen our relationship with them and also help us as Tanzanians have faith in working with them for our development. It shows that the president cares, has a heart and love and also wants to address challenges and establish a good relationship between Tanzania and Germany. This will also help soften the hearts of those victims directly affected by these events and strengthen the good relations. I think he has apologized, but the desires of many people are to hear what will follow after the apology, because people have been waiting to hear if they will receive adequate compensation. People lost their loved ones, homes and families. So, as he mentioned, that when he returns to Germany, he will provide answers. I believe the government should follow up on what those answers entail. Not just returning the remains, but also compensating the victims of those events. I see it as something good, and also as something to be proud of. Because from what we learned in history, those events were not good. Their taking the responsibility to come to us and seek forgiveness is a good thing. And as Tanzanians, we are proud of it and have seen it as an act of honor, because it's something that happened in the past. But now they have remembered it and decided to come and seek forgiveness. So how exactly are the events under German colonial rule remembered today in Tanzania? I asked Nancy Rushahora, a Tanzanian historian lecturing at the University of Dar es Salaam's Department of Archaeology and Heritage Studies. No, there is always an official narrative and unofficial. So these two actually go together. Whereas you find the nation celebrates a, a German colonialism and the encounter that they faced as a national event, as the route to the independence of the country, is in of an official form in families especially and in small communities. So there is agencies of individual 
and small groups. These agencies celebrate or commemorate the uh, encounter with the Germans differently from the national perspective. From the national perspective, this is so much denudated. It is very much small narrative that emphasizes on heroic figures, the kings and chiefs who, who participated in the resistance and who led the people. But it forgets the agencies of other people, such as women and children, and even the elderly. We are also part of this uh, resistance, some of them taking key roles, uh, women like in Komanile, who through her, the Maji Maji ritual, entered the Songea and resulted into a big resistance that was sustained more than any other, other areas. So the nationalist perspective has a danger of putting wrong information into uh, textbooks, but also into the, as a national story. But when you go to the deep, deep down in families and in small groups, you find that the narrative there is different. These uh, uh, heroes and heroines are remembered without othering. That's why you find a name such as that of Komanile is on the list of the heroes and, uh, and heroines of the Majimaj resistance. Although her names and the place of death, or even the death, the nature of death that uh, Komanile encountered, uh, the only female that is known to have participated in the Majimaj resistance in Songea is nowhere to be found. And these same people don't appear to have been the focus of the German president's visit to Tanzania. Do you sense a missed opportunity there? I feel like there is a missed opportunity so badly because even into southern Tanzania itself, into Songea, there is already a division of what the president has addressed and what the president has not addressed. So the visit to Songea has no mentioning of any other societies that were affected. The talking of Songea as a chief of Dengoni, Songea was just a sub-chief. And as one of the people, is a representative of numerous uh, others who were equally executed in the Majimaji resistance. Some of them were executed before him and some after. And so it, the approach of the Germans in terms of uh, asking for forgiveness has been uh, complicated. So when I look at it, for instance, in the case of Namibia, it was an apology and then the return. And when I look at it in terms of, the, of Nigeria, it was the return of the Benini bronze. I don't see anywhere where the apology was tabled. And when you come to Tanzania, you find a nominal mention specifically for the Ngoni while leaving out other atrocities that were committed. And so you, you see that this is more like a political, a political agenda other than a true will to really uh, approach the past and forge towards the future that can be collaboratively as uh, it is aspired. Mm. One, one subject when talking about this whole issue has been uh, the the skulls that of these um, some of these people that were taken away to Germany, carted away by the German colonialists. There's obviously a personal connection for the descendants of these uh, these people. Um, but can you help us understand the cultural significance to these people of having the skulls returned? What does this actually mean to them? The return of, of the skull, actually speaking. Uh, with the chiefs that have been affected by uh, the looting of human remains and the cultural object that were associated with it. They attest that this, this uh, removal is still traumatizing uh, the grandchildren of the, of the victims of, of the German colonialism. So you find that the families are, are never at peace. There are co conflicts but some of them are, are forced to live far away from the land of trauma, the land where these crimes were committed. We should remember that these, uh, com uh, these uh, atrocities and, and killings were done in public. Some of the children and grandchildren were forced to be in attendance when these crimes were committed. And so this actually 
affected affected them so much the extent that the family like that of Songe Ambano had to move from their location from their homes to about 40 kilometers away to uh, find a new home and establish uh, their residence there and so you find it up to today that the families are scattered living in the land that was not their own and these were prominent people in the society because they were chiefs they were ritualists now these two professions in africa are very respected especially for their cultural significance mm. so the effect that is uh, uh, is inflicted into them the effect of uh, the killing and the looting of the cultural object is not only into the skull and the ritual of burying the dead that is important for anyone who has died. A decent burial is, is required, but it is also the associated object. And these two cultural professions, especially that of a chief and that of a ritualist, you should remember that some of the objects that were looted were tools, instruments that were used for healing, for reconciliation, and for the establishment of the harmony of the society. And some of this society claim that they have never seen peace because of the absence of these two, the absence of the human remains and the absence of the cultural objects. Okay. Nancy Rishahura, Tanzanian historian, thank you for speaking to us. Now, part of the fight for justice has also been the campaign for continued investigations into what happened in colonial times and to educate people both in Tanzania and here in Germany. That's at the heart of an ongoing exhibition in Berlin, which is focusing on the missing human remains and looted artifacts from Tanzania in a call for their repatriation. I went to have a look. It's a mobile research project that's involved putting on displays to audiences in Tanzania, getting their verbal and artistic responses and adding them to the exhibition. It's called Marejesho, Swahili for return or restitution. The focus is on the brutality of colonial rulers in what was German East Africa and the artifacts and human remains they took away with them. One of the lead researchers and curators of the project is Minyaka Sururu Mboro. He's dedicated decades of his life to campaigning for clarity about Germany's colonial past and for justice for the descendants of the victims. Talking to this one, this is the old. We went to the Ethnological Museum here in Berlin. We selected 20 objects, photographed them, we went to Grass Museum in Leipzig. Also, we selected 20 objects. And we also went to the Linden Museum in Stuttgart. And also, we picked up 20 objects there. We found also in the archives some photographs of some of the chiefs and the people at home. They didn't know how these chiefs did look like before they were hanged, because most of them were hanged. The team found out that the looted items that were brought to Germany did not only serve as trophies of war. The Germans, they took us, we Africans, we black, that we are under the shoe. We cannot be compared to them in our thinking. Even the animals are even better than we are. And also this shows when you go to the shelves where these human remains, the heads, I call them the heads, I don't use that word, skull, you find, it, you find they are mixed with skulls of monkeys, chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutan, and so on. The Charité is Germany's largest and oldest university teaching hospital. This was the destination for human remains from German colonies around the world, including Tanzania, brought here for racist scientific research. Now, over a hundred years later, it's taken the work of scientists prompted by activists to identify the origins of these body parts so they can return home. 
have these statements? But only some of these items have been found and identified. Activists are pushing for a continued investigation and for an open and honest conversation about Germany's brutal actions in its former colonies, a topic most Germans know nothing about. Well, that's it for now, but be sure to check out our other stories on dw.com forward slash Africa or on Facebook and YouTube. Now, communities and families affected by German colonialism have long been remembering their lost family members. Journalist Ramona Zeitz was at the Maji Maji War Heroes Festival last February, and she sent us these impressions of the ceremonies. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.